like to walk us through um, some key notes that I would like you to um, take along with uh, the webinar. So firstly, we'd like you to know that uh, this webinar is being recorded. So at the end of this webinar, you, you'll be getting a web replay so you can rewatch any part of this webinar that you have missed. All right. So um, secondly, you can raise your hands or ask questions in the Q&A section. Your questions and your comments will be addressed during and after the webinar presentation. All right. So um, if you have questions, if you have comments, please drop them in the Q&A section. We'll be addressing your questions and comments. Also, if you'd like to book an appointment with our team of expert cloud engineers, uh, a consultation link will be sent on the Q&A section, so you can always schedule an appointment to speak with us, our team, and our expert cloud engineers on your cloud platform operations. All right, so our speaker for today is none other than our cloud engineer, John Toriola. He'll be working us through today's um, agenda for the presentation. So, John, please, can you take it up from here? Okay, thank you so much, Dozi. Now, the agenda for today, things we'll be learning. Now, the, the topic of, of today's uh, webinar is Mastering Cloud Platform Operations, Best Practices and Strategies. Now, our agenda is, okay, what do we mean by Cloud Platform Operations? What does that mean? Now, the second thing on the, on the list is benefits of Cloud Platform Operations. Now, the third thing will be the, what are the offerings of Cloud Platform? Like, what are the services that the CPU has to offer. So that's those are the things we'll be uh, talking about today. Okay. So uh before I proceed, let me quickly say this. In case you you because today's today's uh webinar will be more of like uh we, we are trying to introduce you to some like our some of our in-house practice, like some of our in-house uh operations. So in case you you listen through to through this webinar and you you find out that okay it seems you you will need what we are what we are uh, discussing today like the cpo offering we have to offer you can just reach out to uh, our sdr guys on the call you can send uh, put a, a, a dm or probably drop a message in 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 the in-call message and we we'll, we'll attend to you so thank you so much for for listening now the agenda let's let's get back to business so what do we mean by cloud platform operations can we go to the next lesson please Okay, okay. These are the expected uh, takeaways from today's uh, webinar. So you should have a robust understanding of what cloud platform operation is, and learn about all the services that our CPO covers. Now, CPO here actually means cloud platform operations. So what are the offerings that we? Uh, you, you, what are the benefits you get from? Uh, signing up to our cpu so that is what we will be discussing about today basically uh up to the next slide so explanation so what is cloud platform operations that i believe that that will be the from the topic or the title of the webinar the first question that you, you might want to ask yourself is what, what what do you mean by cpu like what is cloud platform operations now that yeah we know that will be your first question so cpo is actually an offering of secure intelligence uh where, where we where we help you manage your uh cloud resources that you will get to see all the services that are uh ingrained into this part to our cpu now we we help you manage deploy monitor your cloud workloads it's multi-cloud you, you you will get a lot of information about this it's it's a multi-cloud uh, multi-cloud offering what you what, what you need to give to us as as an organization is access to your account now once we come in we help you manage your workloads so this this is it's, it's actually a very robust offering now why, why are we doing this now we understand the fact that most organizations want to now if, if to manage your cloud resources you need to get to employ probably uh, a cloud engineer a data engineer and 
maybe maybe in some cases a systems engineer to help you manage your uh, cloud resources now what our cpo offers is now we manage your resources on your behalf you get you don't need to employ any anybody to do that for you we do that we manage we monitor and we we depends on 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 the agreement we have sometimes we even do the deployment for you now what 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 benefit does that give you instead of employing somebody on your own? now the beautiful thing about our cpo is you are going to be interacting with professionals people that not only deploy cloud resources uh once in once in few months we do this every day this is our daily duty so we are always playing with resources on the cloud be it aws be it azure gcp in name it we can we can always come in into your, your your environment and set things up and get things going because that's what we do. Now, if, if you employ a, a, a cloud engineer on your own, there's a likelihood that the cloud oh, engineer wow. will be. Oh, sorry, I thought someone said a question. I, I sent the question immediately. So, what do you want me to do about that? Yes, sir. 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 As I was saying, there's a likelihood that the, the, uh, the cloud engineer you'll be employing will most likely be uh, an AWS uh, professional, like somebody that is acquainted with AWS. Now, there's a possibility that the person you'll be employing will be somebody that is acquainted with Azure. Now, when, when, you, when, you, when you come into our, our CPU, you get the the beauty like it's a multi-cloud facetted it's not it's not limited to helping you figure out okay what's happening on a single cloud we have we have professionals that 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 understand aws we have professionals that are that are pro that, that are gurus in azure you get any uh cloud platform platform of your choice we have professionals that can handle workloads on any uh club uh cloud platform of your choice so this is not uh platform limited it's cut across any cloud platform uh you are on so that is the beauty of our cpu the same things we can do with azure we can do on a uh, gcp the same things we can do on gcp we can do on aws same thing we can do on, we can do it on alibaba because that is our that's our job so that's that's the beauty of our cpu now if we can just move to the next slide let's let's take the services that uh our CPU has to offer one after the other. Let's just take it one after the other. Now, benefit of our cloud platform operation. Now, consistent cloud operations. It's consistent. That's why I said, I was saying earlier that it's 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 cut across all platforms. We're not limited to a single platform. Now, you have reduced reduced risk. How come? Because the person that will be handling your, your, your workload is a professional in the field, is a professional in that particular uh uh, on that particular platform, be it Azure, be it GCP, be it AWS, the person is a professional. So it's, it's a reduced risk. The, the difference is you employing somebody that is a pro in uh, AWS to come and do something uh, for you on Azure. Is it like because some of the knowledge actually can be passed from one cloud to another, but there's a likelihood that there will be a a, uh, a, a lot of risk in that in that in that case. Because the person is actually a professional in in a different cloud. Do you understand? But when when you come to uh when you when you partner with us and you, you accept to go with our CPU, you get you get professionals in each of these fields. Now another benefit is lower fixed cost. It's cheap. We don't we don't charge you uh exorbitant price that you you you, you won't want to uh, be in business with us. It's actually very low. Now. Another benefit is reduced time to value. This I already explained. The person handling your workload is a professional in the field, a professional in the particular uh, in uh, the particular uh, cloud uh, platform. So you get you get your work done at at in at scale in, in a very fast uh, in, in a short time. Now another thing is faster RTU and RPU. Now because we understand the 
the terrain we are in, we, we, we understand your workload. We can we can play with your RTO and your RPO and give you the best time possible to get your workloads up and running, even after uh, an issue, even after a disaster. We can get your, your RPO and RTOs working like perfect. We can give you a good RTO and a good RPO. So these are some of the benefits we have to that our CPU offers you. Now, let's just take each of the services one at a time and dig deep. So this, these are the uh, the offerings that our, our CPU offers. Now, infrastructure provision and using IAC, we'll, we'll touch on each of these one after the other. DevSecOps, we have infrastructure maintenance, multi-cloud support, infrastructure and process documentation, cloud security operations, cost management and optimization. These are the offerings that our CPU gives you. Now, let's just go in depth and give a little bit of explanation on each of the different offerings. Now, infrastructure de deployment using IAC. Now, I've, I've, I've played with some customers or some clients uh, accounts, AWS accounts, or sometimes Azure accounts, and I come to realize that most of the things that were deployed were deployed using uh, they were deployed directly on the console. Now, there, there's a lot of drawbacks to that when, when you deploy things directly to console. Let's imagine you are you are working in uh, in the North Virginia uh, region. You, you deployed all your resources directly on the console. You, you, you are just clicking away. Now, if there's a disaster, disaster and you need to get all your workloads to start working in, let's say, the uh, Oregon region, what do you do? Or the Ohio region? What do you do in that instance? That, that will be a very low RPO and a very low RTO because you have to start provisioning the resources again, one after the other, by clicking on the console, which is not right. We, it, it, it's doable, but it's not advisable. But imagine your, your, your code is up, uh, your, your, your workload is provisioned using uh, Terraform. In the case of AWS, let's say CloudFormation. Can you imagine how quickly you can deploy to any other region of your choice? That is what we do. Now, when, 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 we, when we are the one provisioning your resources, probably with our, our, with our CPU, this is one of the offerings. If we are the one provisioning resources, we don't, we don't provision things directly on the console. What we do is we, we set up probably a Terraform uh, file to create all your resources, or if you are on AWS, we can also go with CloudFormation. So we, we prefer to do the deployment directly using code, using IAC infrastructure as code. So that's that's the, the path we'll, we'll take your, your resources through. We don't, we don't provision directly on the console. That's one of the benefits of, of our cloud platform operation. Can we go to the next slide, please? Sorry if you're just joining us. We actually started the call earlier because of... Uh, because we had some, uh, uh, not, not, not a glitch per se, we, we, the, the, the call today will be longer, so we need to start earlier. So that's why we've started the call already. So can we just get to the next slide? And um, while we're waiting for the next slide, um, please and please, I would like to reiterate, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A section. John is going to address all your questions, all your comments during and after the presentation. So feel free to drop your questions and comments. And also there's a link for you to book a consultation with our team of experts, cloud engineers, if you need help with your AWS cloud platform operations or any cloud services at all, we're here to assist you, you understand? And also we apologize for starting quite early. As John has mentioned, um, we have a, a very long, Set of information to dish out today. That's why we decided to start earlier than expected. Once again, we apologize for that. All right, so feel free, drop your questions, click on the link, book a consultation with us. We are here to assist you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dozier, for that. For the benefits, you, you can just stay on the on the or on the slide, this particular slide. For the benefit of those that are just joining us, now, what we are discussing today is mastering cloud platform operations. Now, uh, best practices and strategies. So what, what are, it's, it's, it's a discussion on our, on our CPU. Now, this CPU is an, is an internal offering of AWS where we come into your 
uh, your accounts or whether AWS, Azure, or any any cloud of your choice, we come in and we help you set things up. We help you arrange things. We help you get things running the right way. So we, we bring in our, our technical know-how into your into your uh, account, your your organization, and we help you set up your cloud in in a way that you, you it that, that that is cost effective that that it follows best practices so that is what we are discussing today now we, we've gotten to a stage where we are, I'm, I'm actually discussing our uh our, pla our cloud platform operations the, the the offerings that come with uh tagging along with us on our cpu like if you if you register for our cpu the, the benefits you get from it that's what i'm discussing now now the first point i made mention of is the fact that we, we when, when we when we are the one that will set up your your uh, your cloud resources your cloud workload we do everything with infrastructure as code we don't we don't deploy things on the console now i gave a benefit of that earlier now imagine your 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 current workload is deployed on on north in, in the north virginia region and you want to probably there's a disaster you want to or if, even though if there's no disaster you just want to replicate your resources into a different region now, if you have not deployed your, your code with IAC, you will have to click on the console to set it up in a different region, which is time consuming, and which is not actually um, a, a best practice. So what we do when, when you sign up with our CPO, we deploy all your resources with infrastructure, with IAC, uh, be it uh, Terraform or if you are on AWS, we can we can go with cloud formation. Depending on what the workload is, we we we, we take initiative on that. So that is what we do now. If you, if you are deployed with Terraform, you can just change the region and your deployment goes directly into a different region. So this is one of the benefit of our CPU. Now, you you, you might say, okay, this is not really something big. Now I I can I promise you, if you deploy your workload with directly on the console, it's when disaster come knocking that's when you understand the benefit of iac but you don't want to wait till then you get you want to do everything to to uh, to to the uh, the best way it should be done so that's why you want to go with iac from the get go now when you sign up with us uh, when you sign up on our cpo we give you this right out of the box you get iac directly now can we go to the next offering okay uh you get uh devops also out of the box now we deploy your resources using cicd in, in, what that means is we we set up continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines in your cloud now the, the, if you are on azure we, what we do is we set up azure devops for you if if probably you're work you're working with aws we set up code pipeline and code deploy we set up all the necessary resources to deploy your code through the pipeline now this what devops does is it it, it simplifies the process of going into production it simplifies it by in a, a large magnitude you get things you would have done by probably setting up a server getting all the uh all the environment variables uh properly configured on the server setting up our uh, networking and everything those things are out of the way because we are using we will use devops to set up everything that you need to do so once we push into the pipeline your resources are automatically deployed into uh into prod or into any any other environment of your choice so you get devops devsecop you get it directly from our cpu offering this is another benefit of our cpu now I believe if, if you've if you've been on the cloud for a while, probably you've been playing with technology for 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 a while now. You will understand the benefit of DevOps. It's it's actually you, you can you can you can you can discuss it to, like you can talk about the advantages of DevOps and you you don't you don't you don't explain things that has to do with pipelines. Like that is the beauty of DevOps. Everything goes through the pipeline. Everything once you push your code to probably GitHub or code commits or uh as your commit or something like that once you push your code into your repository it directly triggers the pipeline and once you add accept the code into your your prod environment it automatically gets into prod and your clients or your users can start 
utilizing the new features of your code automatically. You don't need to play with servers and all those things. That's the beauty of DevOps. And you get this out of the box by signing up with us, uh, signing up on our CPU. Now let's go to the next uh, a benefit. Now infrastructure maintainers. Now this is another beautiful thing that you get from our CPU when you sign up with us. We maintain your infrastructure. Now let's say you have some workloads in uh, probably Windows Server, maybe on Azure, GCP, AWS, IBM Cloud, name it. Now what we do for you is we, we maintain your infrastructure. What does that mean? Now, the beauty of patching your server is such that your server is, is safe, it's security. So we have, it's like fr from our name, the, the name of the organization is called Secure. Security is literally the most important thing to us. And when you don't patch your server when you ought to, you are op you, you are opening uh, you will have loopholes in your server and your 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 workload can easily be tampered with because it's on the internet so what we do is we we do a routine maintenance we patch your servers for you automatically we do this and we give you an up to date detail of all the all, all the patches that have been done on your server from when you sign up our CPU to wait, like to as long as you are still on our CPU, you get that information free of charge monthly. We give you the detail of all the patches that have been done. Now, this is something that comes with our CPU out of the box. You, you get infrastructure maintenance directly. Let's just go to the next offering, please. Now I've said this multiple times already. Like I've said, sorry for the for the poor. I've said this earlier. We, we do multi-cloud support. Now we are not limited to a single cloud uh, platform. If you if you want to deploy your resources into Azure, we can assist to our CPU offering covers Azure. Our CPU offering covers G GCP. Our CPU offering covers AWS. Covers IBM Cloud. Name it. We are available. Just talk to us, and we, we we don't just we don't just tout this like it's it's we have professionals in the organization that will undo your your resources your workload in any of these uh, uh cloud platforms. We are professionals that will undo that. So it's it's multi cloud, and you get that also. It's it's you're not paying an extra amount to get this it's it's out of the box. Once you sign up with our C, on our CPU, you get this also out of the box. Now. As Dose said earlier, in case you have any question, probably you, you plan on setting something up on any cloud uh, platform of your choice, you can just send us a message in the, uh, in the income message. You can drop a message for us. We'll pick it up and we'll, we'll reach out to you. So please don't forget to do that. Now, let's take the next offering of our CPU. Infrastructure and process documentation. Now, what does this mean? I've, I've been taxed to work on some client accounts that when you when you when you pick up the account even before you start playing around in the account one of the things you you realize is there is no proper documentation you will be surprised how many big organizations now i mean enterprise organizations in nigeria and in the world like that don't have proper documentation of their resources of their workload now this is one of our foundation like in, in in secure intelligence this is a foundational thing for us we don't joke with documentation now when we when, when you sign up on our cpu what we do the first thing we do haven't gotten access into your account is to document everything we find in your account all the all the number of i am users all the i am users all the uh resources that are deployed currently in the account we do a proper documentation of everything now whatsoever we need to de delete based on the cpu we give you a documented like the, we, we give you a documented pro like the process everything is properly laid down we don't just delete things because okay we believe okay this this thing is not needed or this thing is just costing you money and it's not being used we won't just delete 
we inform you with we, we document it and we show it to you that okay this particular resource you have in your account it's costing you this amount of money monthly but it is not you it's not needed in your workload do you want us to get rid of it now the funny thing is you you might not even be aware that you have something like that costing you that much I can give you series of examples of 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 uh, of clients that have gotten into their accounts, and I discovered that they have some uh, VPC endpoints up that are not doing anything. Like a number of VPC endpoints were just deployed, that's not doing anything, and that alone was racking up. More than, apart from the VPC endpoint, in a single account, like I've seen a, a, an account and. Yeah, yeah, and an AWS account that the number of unused resources was generating more than five hundred dollars monthly in the account. Because the reason is there's no proper documentation. Now we, when we come in, we go through all your all your all your all your workloads, all the resources provisioned, and we give you a detailed documentation of what is happening in your account. Then, as we work further, as we as we start to do things on your account because of the CPU that you've you've signed on to, we will begin to show you what and what you need to delete, what and what you need to provision to like. Okay, if, if there's a particular resource that is that that maybe it's it's most it's useful, but it's not the best way of doing things. Like let's say you are trying to deploy a web application, for example, on AWS. You can deploy static uh, website with an S3 bucket. Let's say you are using uh, a, a, a server to to deploy the same uh, a, a, to deploy the web app that is just offering or that is just serving static web applications. Now the server will be costing you a lot more than if you are using an S3 bucket, for example. So these are the type of information that you you, you get. Like we, we want to help you work on your cost. We'll get there. That's another offering. So there is proper documentation of everything we're doing in your account every single thing so that this is one of the uh, benefits beauty of our cpu let's just move to the next uh offering of our cpu so you get cloud security operations i think i i made mention of this earlier security i believe you understand what this means like even the funny thing is even even uh organizations that are just setting things up on the cloud you don't want to play with security security is very very important now you you, you might understand let's say you are coming from on premise you have a data center you want to move your workload to the cloud you might understand security in your data center perfectly but there are some differences between securing your data in the data center and secure your data in the cloud. It, it's, there are a lot of similarities, but there are few differences that you need to take note of. For example, in your data center, you need to you need to secure the the premises of your data center. You need to get security, like probably guards, to protect your servers, to protect your uh, uh, your electricity connection and and the likes. But on the cloud, those things are not needed. But the cloud security also has its own uh, niche that you don't get to set up in, uh, in 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 the data centers. Now we understand this. We understand cloud security because this is our field. This is what we are good at. Now we know that you are probably uh, a, a front end developer that is very good with. Uh, front-end applications like React and SGS. We know that, that because that's your that, that's your field. Now, what we pride ourselves in, in is the cloud. We understand the cloud. As I said in, during the introduction, we have professionals for literally the major the major cloud uh, platforms. We have professionals there, it's people that understand Azure in and out, people that understand AWS in and out. Now we can we can we give you. The best security you can you can think about on any of the uh, on any of the cloud uh, platforms because that's our field. So this also you get out of the box. Uh, another thing is when we deploy your workload, we deploy your workload with the best security in mind. We want to secure your network. We want to secure your account. 
we want to secure your your resources we understand this now let me give you an example you might think okay the same way we set up servers in uh in our data center is literally the same thing we do on the cloud it's sort of but there the cloud helps you secure things better for example if you are working in let's say aws and you you, you want to put your resources in in a, in a vpc i've seen i've seen big enterprise set up their their servers directly on the on the public internet like it's on the cloud it's in the cloud but there is a direct direct connection from the internet to their servers now that is not a proper way of setting up your servers you want to put your servers in a private uh, uh private network you don't want just anybody to be able to reach your your private uh your, your servers your probably your database but if you are on, if you are doing this on premise you don't worry about things like this that is the difference when you are doing things on premise and in the cloud now in the cloud you want to you want better security you want to set up your uh your servers in a in a private network you want to set up your database in a private network and probably put a load balancer to connect to those uh, uh to, to connect to your web app instead of putting your web app directly in a public uh network that's that's not pro that's not the proper way of doing things now we understand this because this is what we deal with day to day you might not understand it that because it's not so much of your feed so we give this to you as one of our benefit as one of the benefit of our cpu out of the box can we take the next offering please Now, this is what I've been hammering on for, for some time now, cost management and optimization. This is what we do. Now, we understand the, the we understand literally all the resources you have in most of these uh, uh, CSPs. We, we, like, we understand S3 buckets. We understand the different storage layers. We understand the different storage uh, categories in, in S3. We understand Azure. We know these things more. We know things that are expensive and we know the things that are cheap because this is what we do on a daily basis. Now, if you sign up with on our CPU, you get our cost managed cost management tools and implementations free. Now we know when to use an S3 bucket and when not to use an S3 bucket. We know when to okay. Let's let's just stay with S3. I'm sorry for those that probably are familiar with Azure. I, I'll give examples on Azure too. Now, we understand when you need to move your 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 uh your files from a standard storage to something like Glacier, where you get cheaper benefits. We understand these things because that is what we do. When you sign up on, on our CPU, we bring cost management into your organizations immediate into your organization immediately. Now. In the, in, the, in the few number of years I, that I've worked with Secure, I know, I, I've seen clients' uh, payments go from more than $1,000 to less than $500. We've done it. We, we've set things up. Now, it gets cheaper. At the same time, it becomes more secure. Like the, the two things work hand in hand, cheaper and like better security. You get better security and better cost management. We set up alarms. Now, if, if some of your resources are probably raking in $200, you want to set up an alarm. Okay, from, from our planning, this particular resource is not supposed to exceed $100. How come it's going beyond $150? What is happening? that is what we will give you. you you don't need to understand you don't even need to log in into your aws account to get the information because in our cpu offering you will get that information weekly monthly out of the box you get it freely that because that because we are the ones managing your cloud operations we are the one dealing with our cost management and op optimization so you can agree with me that most of these things i've said there are things that if you've not spent time on the on the cloud uh, platform you will you will really not know you, you won't know the gimmicks you will know okay what and what you need to do how to set things up I, i've seen i've seen uh 
I've seen I've seen some clients that are setting up EFS when what they really need is probably uh sorry I've seen clients set up EBS volumes when what when what they really need is an EFS storage cost management now there are some EBS volumes that are cheaper why there are some that are more expensive now this is me going into nitty gritties of the some of the cloud uh services but the fact that we understand how these things work gives us better idea to help you set up your resources set up your workload with best practices you get i have mentioned infrastructure of code now we are down to cost you get all these things done for you perfectly now let's just go to our next offering please yeah monitoring and alerting the fact that we now if, if you are the one that set up things yourself and which i've seen a lot of like I, i've gotten into some accounts that they have <laughs> it's it's funny let me be sincere with you they have about about 300 lambda functions in their aws accounts and everything is provisioned directly on the console i'm laughing because if you've not played with these things you won't understand the implication of an attack in that particular scenario now we will set up your resources using iac and we will also attach monitoring and alerting now what does you understand the term monitoring and alerting what this will do is if anything is being tampered with or if anything is costing probably more than it should cost we will get alerted and once we get alerted because we are the ones monitoring and are managing your cloud uh, your cloud workload we will help you figure out the perfect solution to the issue that is at hand because we've we've, we've been alarmed do you understand now if you are the one setting these things up you, you okay you you might have had okay you can on aws you can use cloud watch oh you can use cloud trail but how do you set them up to get the benefit of out of those things not just understanding cloud watch okay cloud watch you will get your logs you will get this cloud trail you will get but can you set it up in such a way that you will get benefit from these things now that is what we will do for you for example if we are setting up a server for on on on, on your account for you we will connect it to cloud watch so to get information about like to get logs from your server directly now the logs that cloudwatch pull in we can connect those logs to okay let, let me give you an example let's say you have uh an application running in an ec2 instance on aws now the, the application has been running perfectly for over three months all of a sudden the application uh stopped working because you are not you've not set things up properly you have to go into the server to understand what is happening now if we had if 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 you sign up to our cpu and we are the one that provisioned such a server we would have connected cloudwatch to your server in such a way that even before your server stops working we would know what is likely going to happen because we will monitor the logs and the locks will, will, will set alarms, will, will connect the locks to an alarm. For example, let's say the RAM of your instance or the RAM of your server is getting overwhelmed. You, you've almost exhausted it. Now, you won't know that because you are not going to always log in into your server daily to check the RAM capacity. But if something like that is going to happen, we, we would have been collecting the locks in CloudWatch, then we would have attached an alarm to the CloudWatch. Now, in, in the alarm, there will be an alarm that tells us something like, oh, if the RAM of the server is getting to uh, 80%, alert us. Now, once we get the alert, we will know what to do. If we need to scale up your instance or uh, or we need to, if we need to do vertical scaling or horizontal scaling, we would have picked it up and we'll start scaling. But if you've not connected these things in the way we, the way we would have connected it, only when your server stops working that's when you'll be able to figure out what what has happened but before your server stops working because we would have done this our uh, best practice connection for you 
we will know what's going to happen even before it happens. Why? Because that is what we do. Yeah, secure. We, 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 we want to give you the best experience on the cloud. That's like, that is our mission. We want to give you, <laughs> you, you must have heard to, to some people, I'm, I'm literally laughing, to some people they believe uh, it's a lie when you tell them the cloud is actually cheaper. Like I've spoken to people that believes it's a lie. Now I've, I've had some enterprise uh, meeting, enterprise uh, like some of the biggest banks in Nigeria have been in, in, in meetings with, the, uh, with their uh, chief security of uh, chief technology officers, like the people that are in charge of, of their tech, like they've been to some of our meetings and some of their, most of their complaints has actually been, the cloud is actually expensive, which is not true. I had to work. I had to work some some executives of some branch through. Okay, now you have a web application that is being deployed using a server. Now the fact that it's being deployed through a server, it means you can't use a a, a, a like a a server with little uh with probably four vCPU to provision the, the the web application. You have to use something very heavy, something powerful. Now. The fact that you are going with something very powerful, it that will be very very expensive. But what if you've deployed your your resources into an S three bucket? I kid you not, you'll be getting more than seventy percent savings from just deploying into an S three bucket. And if it is not something that can be deployed into an S three bucket, okay, why not take advantage of spot instances? Or the spot fleet on AWS. You don't if the fact that we understand spot fleet, we 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 deal with this thing, we, we we play with them, we've set them up over time. You that you just want to come into the cloud, it's it's not it's not your field, you might not understand it, but the, the type of savings you will get from a reserved instance or, uh, or or a savings plan, we understand that we can set that up for you. So you'll be getting about 70%, 60% savings off. Now, what that, literally, what, what that translates to is, instead of you paying $100, you're probably paying $40. That is very, very simple to understand. Now, this, all these things I've been talking about, trying to explain, is just for you to understand that our CPO, our cloud platform operation, that's, that's the, the, uh, the short is now CPO, covers all these things totally. Now let, let's take the next uh the next benefit. Oh, now this is well architected review. Now this is something uh AWS set up. It's called a, a well a, a well architected framework. Now AWS believes for for you to 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 say you've properly set up your your cloud resources. Your cloud resources must have must go through six uh pillars like the, the six pillars must be very solid now the first thing will be uh optimi optimization performance like it's your 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 uh, workload must the optimization must be very very good that's oh, oh sorry operational excellence that's the first thing the second thing will be performance efficiency third thing is reliability the next thing there is sustainability. Now I think we have we have, we've we've done a webinar on well architected review, which we can actually point you to the link. I don't want to go into details and like explaining each of these pillars one at a time. Another thing is uh, uh security and cost optimization. Now we can actually do a webinar ne next time where I go into details on these six different uh pillars or or these six different well architected pillars. But this shows you that. For you to say your workload on the cloud is perfect, you must have a very high percentage on each of these pillars. You must your 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 workload must be very very cost. The cost optimization optimization of your workload must be to the best standard. Security must be top notch. Sustainability must be good. Reliability, like for example, when I said, okay, if, if something happens, if there's a disaster in a, a region, how quickly can you move to a different region? If you've set up IAC, that will fix your reliability. If you have continuous backup, which will come naturally from our CPU, we will set up backup for you. 
that fixes reliability, operational uh, excellency, performance efficiency. These are the things like, like this is our goal when we set up things for you on the cloud. These six uh, pillars, that is what we, that, now let me say this, when we set things up for you, like if 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 you if you uh, if you sign up on our on our CPU and we are the one that set up your workload or your workload that you've already set up, you want us to come and check things out. The the things we want to watch out for when we are setting things up or when we are helping you make corrections, has to give you a very good pass mark on these six pillars. We want to make sure our workload is secure. Oh, sorry, your workload is secure. We want to make sure you are getting the best cost benefit from your workload. These are the things we have in mind. We want to make sure your workload is reliable. Now, these things, they are easy to actually mention, but setting it up is something that requires knowledge. Like you need to know how to do these things before you can do proper setup. Yeah, okay. I believe I've explained this well, but we can go into details because well architecture framework is 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 a is a is a broad topic on its own. Now, but, but I think I've done a little bit of justice. I, we might still come back to this before the end of the webinar, where I just probably explain a little bit more. Let's just take the next uh the next uh benefit service level agreements. Yeah, now this is very, very straightforward. If we tell you, okay, this and this in, in probably in our SLA, this and this are the things we'll be doing at this time. We will we, we will meet, we will make sure all our agreements, everything is ticked. We don't joke with this because this is what actually determines if if we are if we are doing your uh biddings or if we are doing your if we are setting up things for you the right way. You understand? And the way we will actually do the setup it will be very easy for us to meet the SLA. For example, you, you want to get uh, a detail, like in, I, you know, I mentioned earlier that you get uh, process documentation and everything. We will give you that because that will be part of the things that will be in our SLA. Okay, these are the things that we noticed in your, in your workload. This particular server is being attacked. And these are the things we did to prevent the attack. You will get those type of information. Like now, this are type of information you you might not really figure out yourself until probably there's a disaster. But we will always make sure we go into your account on a daily basis to check the health of your servers. Okay, this server is at CPU utilization of about 80%. Is that okay? That is not okay. Then we will we'll put a documentation together. We will send it to you and inform you that this particular server is about 80% utilization, which is not very good. So should we scale the, the, your, your servers? Okay, so that you have uh, two servers. Now, if you have two servers, both of them can work at maybe 40% or 50% utilization, but your, your, your client, your users will be served properly. Now, these are the type of agreements we want to make with you in our SLA, which we will meet monthly. Now, lastly, let's just take the last offering. which will be the, can, can we move to the next slide, please? Now, this is the beautiful thing about everything I've been saying, because this actually sums up everything. This whole thing I've been saying, you will get it, 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 it comes 24 seven. It's a 24 seven support. We have, we have, we have staff that we, that works from, uh, it, it's a shift actually, basically it's a shift. So if that, that means what, what that would do for us is, it helps us, apart from the fact that we've set up monitoring and alarm alarm on your account, there will be somebody to monitor your resources at every time. Such that if anything comes up, let's say one o'clock in the middle of the night, somebody is available to pick that thing up immediately. Can you see that? that like, this is the bedrock of everything. Because... It's 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 my amazing if I tell you that I've I've worked with a client that so okay let me not go into details but what happened was the server of the client had some issues because that issue is not affecting the day to day activity 
up the server, like, up, like the, the, the web content the server is serving daily. The, the client didn't know, th this was before they signed up to our CPU actually, because it was when we were performing our CPU uh, uh, infrastructure documentation that we figured this out. The client didn't know that something like that had, it has been up, like, like the, the, the server had, had issues for over 13 days. Now, I mean 13 days. And the issue the server had is something that, okay, if probably a variable or something changed in the server, like, because it's it's like a cron job. If something should change based on the timing, the whole server will be down till they rectify the issue. Like, the, the clients didn't figure that out for over 13 days. These are some of the things that will not happen when you sign up to our CPU because we will make sure we do a 24 7 uh, vetting of your servers. We'll do a 24 7 vetting of your workload. We'll do a 24 7 vetting of your account. So it's holistic. It's not just your workload. We're not, we not trying to fix your workload alone. We are trying to fix your whole infrastructure. We are, we are trying to fix your, your account as a whole. This whole thing cuts across infrastructure de deployment. That's where everything starts from. Backup plans. We'll, we'll make sure you have backup such that if anything goes down, maybe you are being attacked by mention anybody who we'll have your server up and running again with better security. Now, it seems, I, I, let, let me quickly say this. I, I think until, until, most of these organizations, until when they have an issue at hand, they don't they don't really understand the importance of security. Because I, I, I must be sincere with you, in recent times, about four to five of like some of the clients that, that actually signed up to our CPU recently, it's actually because of attacks. They got attacked, and now they are scrambling for oh solution. But you, you don't need to wait till when you get attacked because you don't want your business to be down for days. You need to be, you want to be proactive about these things. I believe if, if, if you understand the value you're passing across to your customer, you want to do everything in your power, everything possible to give them the best service 24 seven. And for you to offer the best service 24 seven, you have to make sure you are giving a 24 seven uh, look. You are, you are doing a 24 seven uh, security monitoring of your like 24 7 monitoring of your resources of your workload of your account such that you don't have let's say an iam user that has, like imagine you have an iam user that has not logged in into the account for 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 months can you can you imagine that there is a user in your account and that user has not logged in into your account for months the, and the funny thing is that user might have been laid off in the organization and the user still have access to your account. Now, these are the things we, because that person can literally log in into the account one day and delete all your servers. All your workloads will be down till when you're able to set it up again. Now, those are the type of things we will monitor. We will make sure there's no user that has privileges, that a, a privilege that is that is more than what they need. We, we, we give you the List we set up list privilege privilege access for every member, every every worker in your every staff in your organization. Those are the type of things we would do. Now, those these things I'm, i I mentioned like this things I'm saying now looks very okay, nothing serious about it. But until you get attacked, I, that that's not our wish. Obviously, that's why we are we are trying to uh, preach to you our CPU. We don't want you to get attacked. We want you to be proactive about securing your workload. We want you to be proactive about securing your, 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 your servers. We want you to be proactive about securing your, your accounts in general. So this is all the our CPU offers you. Now, you, you, you agree with me that if you have this setup, you are, you'll be much more safer than you, current, than you are currently. This is what we want to bring to the table for you.
it's better you i believe it's better you spend few dollars maybe a couple of a couple hundred of hundreds of dollars monthly than spending thousands if not even millions of dollars for uh to gain to getting access back to your to your account to your server i've seen a lot i must be sincere with you i've seen a lot and, I, and i've had a lot because some of some of the some of the big guns in organization in secure intelligence there are people that have worked with multi like multinational organizations now i've had things like okay there's an organization that somebody got access to their their account and the person was able to spin up servers that the person the person was using the servers to to mine bitcoin like to mine uh i'm not sure if it's bitcoin now but to mine one of these bit uh 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 related uh coins so imagine the server was just there running now what the what the company noticed was that their their aws bill went up like imagine you're you're, you're paying 500 dollars and all of a sudden start paying 700 dollars monthly now there's a likelihood you might not pick it out okay maybe something happened but if you are proactive you will know that something is wrong do you understand so we will give you security will give you cost management will give you uh infrastructure de deployment best practice out of the box or we just talk to us get signed in into our cpu and you get all these things perfectly done for you your servers will be saved your workload will be saved your resources will be saved and most especially your account your azure account gcp account aws account will be properly secured so this is what we are pitching to you. If you have questions, you can go ahead and ask now. We we'll actually appreciate if you have questions to ask us. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks. Okay. Thank go you back so to much, me. John. Thank you so much, John. That was a very insightful uh, presentation. I'm sure we all have um, some sort of idea of what we stand to gain from um, participating or integrating your AWS account into our cloud platform operations from consistent cloud operations, reduce risk, lower fixed costs. There are a lot of advantages for you and your business. If you can integrate your AWS account into our cloud platform operations. So like we said earlier, um, feel free to drop your questions and comments so we can provide answers or provide more details as, uh, regarding the questions or comments you have. All right, so John, I'll be taking a, a few questions from the Q and A section. So, firstly, uh, the first question we have is: um, How do you actively monitor multiple accounts simultaneously? How do you actively monitor mon multiple AWS or cloud um, accounts simultaneously? So, can you help us answer that question, John? Okay, that's that's a good one. Now. Let me let me just give an example. Okay, imagine you have uh, four different accounts, AWS accounts. There's a likelihood that if it's if it's in the same if it's connected to the same organization, you are probably using AWS organization to manage all the accounts. Now, what you can do is you can set in in one of the accounts, even if you are not using AWS organization, in one of the accounts, you can set up uh, an S3 bucket where you collect you. you dump all the logs from the different accounts maybe your cloud trade logs your cloud watch logs your your vp vpc log you can vpc flow logs you can dump everything into the same s3 bucket like you have four different accounts you create an s3 bucket in one of the accounts then you get all the other accounts to dump or yeah to to put all their logs into the S3 bucket. Now, when, when you have everything connected to the S3 bucket, you can perform wonders from the S3 bucket because all the logs are there. You can just probably set up a, a quick site. You can set up a, several same uh, uh, processes to figure out, okay, what is happening in your account at the same time so all the accounts you are pulling logs from all the accounts into the same s3 bucket and you can run processes on the logs as, as as you wish so that's a simple way to get logs from multiple accounts thank you very much john for that question but how about we put the question this way how does um, secure intelligence limited 
actively multi, moni, uh, monitor multiple accounts. Okay, if we're asking people to sign up to our cloud platform operations, how do we actively monitor all of these accounts? That's that's the question. Oh, okay, good. Now I told you earlier that when, when we set things up for you, we connect everything to CloudWatch. We connect every we set alarms on each of your probably servers or your resources, the, the important resources, we connect alarms to them. Now, those alarms, when they are triggered, they send us mails. Now, when I get a mail, okay, let's say one of the accounts we are monitoring, when I get a mail, okay, uh, this server needs to be probably, the, the server is running out of CPU, uh, uh, CPU, we need to come in and fix it. It's, it's, it's that simple. Now, as I said, Another thing I said earlier was, now I will get the mail. What if I get the mail in the middle of the night? What happens? I can't check it, obviously. That's why we have 24 seven support. We have somebody that will be on standby in the middle of the night because we run a shift. We have somebody that will be on standby to check the mails. Okay, if the mail comes in by 1, p uh, 1 a.m., the person can quickly start working for on a fix that will be documented. So we don't just fix. We document our fix. So by the time you wake up in the morning, you will get a mail. Okay, you got this attack in by 1 a.m. in this particular server that is resident in this particular account. These are the things we did to fix the issue. Thank you so much. We, you, we, you will get that mail by morning. Now, you don't know what happened, but you, you've gotten a taste of what our CPU offers you. It's detailed the documentation is detailed you, that's what you get when you wake up in the morning so that's what our cpu offers you thank you Lizzie. all right thank you very much john that was a very good um very very good answer all right so um please like we mentioned if you have further questions feel free to drop them in the q a sections we'll still be going over some questions that we have for secure intelligence limited and We'll be directing these questions to John, so he'll be giving us um, expert answers to these questions. And also, feel free to click on the link in the Q&A section and click on the link to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with our team of cloud experts. If you are looking to migrate to the cloud, if you're looking to um, come into our cloud platform operations, or you need help setting up your cloud um, activities or infrastructure, feel free to click on the link and book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us. All right, so John, there's um, another question on well-architected review. So the question is, does the well-architected review come as an additional cost or is it covered by the cloud platform operations? Okay, so this, this, this is exactly why I said, uh, but I think we have webinars on well-architected framework. I think we do, but per venture we don't. We can have a webinar because well attended it's, it's a big topic on its own and it has it's it, it has its own benefit now it's well architected review that will perform your account it comes directly with the offering and it comes directly with our cpu you don't need to pay an extra cost now when, when we perform the review we, we, we might see some issues with your with your account now we need to now perform fix we need to perform what we call like a remediation we need to remediate the issue now if we remediate the issue you will get some uh free aws credits now if, because we will not be the one to now we will perform the review free it's free it comes with our cpu but when we now perform the remediation to the issues we find on your aws account you get about more than i think about probably five thousand dollars credit from AWS. Now, if, because we are not the ones that will not perform the fix to the, uh, the, uh, the remediation to the issues, then you need to pay us some money to perform the fix. So that is where it's the cost, the, the review itself is free. It comes with our CPU, but the remediation where you will get some free uh, credit for, you will need to pay us for the remediation. So that's how it, it, it's a broad topic. If, if you want to sign up for our well architected re, uh, review and remediation, that is something you can do. But well architected comes as a benefit of our CPU. Thank you. So we have one final question. Um, 
it says um, the speaker says you mentioned you had a scenario where a client had an issue but they didn't know what they didn't know they had an issue before it was too late what are some of the non-obvious signs or symptoms or unknown issues that even an experienced professional should watch out for that can trigger a company management to consider cloud usage or managed service before there is a problem or avoid fire fighting? I don't know if you get the question, but the question is just trying to, the person just wants to ask, um, what are those things that even a, an experienced and cloud professional should watch out for that can easily identify issues in cloud infrastructure before it is too late. Those little things that one should actually pay attention to in their cloud infrastructure. I don't know if you get that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do, yeah, I do. <laughs> now that's a beautiful question, actually, a very beautiful one. The truth is most of these things comes with experience, you get. Now, let me just say, Based on experience, you, you will not know that. Let, let's take, for example, if you are working with an EC2 instance on AWS, now you believe you will get uh, alarms. You can, you can quickly set up a metric for, for your instance, for your server. You get. Now, what you, what you, the metrics you will get for, for an AWS instance will be something like a CPU utilization. Uh, I think disk storage, I think, yeah, and two other things too. But you'll be amazed that you will not get any information. There's no metric for your RAM usage. There is none. So if you don't know, if you've not, if 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 you don't know, your server can the CPU utilization of your server might be perfect. It might be at a very good percentage. Meanwhile, the RAM of your server has an issue. Now, if you don't know that you need to connect a CloudWatch agent directly to your server to get logs for your ram or to get logs for your web application in general you will not be able to figure that out so that's why i said it comes with experience and it comes with like yeah majorly experience actually majorly experience yeah th these are some of the things like it's not spelled out that okay you not get there's no metric for ram and all those things but when you've played a lot with any of these uh, cloud platforms, you will understand, okay, there are some things that you get here that you don't get here, which you need to uh, provision for yourself. You get, so it's it's experience that best things like that. Well, that's a very nice question. Thank you so much for asking. All right. Thank you very much for that answer, John. Um, I want to take one last question. This one just came in recently. Um, it says, is the well-architected review only for AWS cloud-based workloads. And does it, I think we need to we need to do a webinar. Well, I think we if we if we have a webinar on this, maybe we should just send the links to every participant of the call on the call. But yeah, I, let me quickly answer the question. Yeah, agree with you. Yeah, yeah. No, you can actually do well architected for clients on on a different cloud too. You can you can actually. All right. All right. So thank you very much. Um, we may not be able to take all the questions. So um, thank you very much for your questions. And also, you can click on the link to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with our team of cloud experts. If you have further questions, if you require assistance with your AWS um, account or any cloud platform operation at all, we are the guys for you. So click on the link, book an appointment with us, and we'll be there to answer you. So thank you. Once again, John, for that um, beautiful presentation. I'm sure we've learned a lot today. And um, thank you to everyone who has taken out their time to attend this um, webinar. As we stated at the start, um, we'll be sending you a web replay as this um, webinar is recorded. So you can always, always go to our YouTube channel to rewatch any part of this webinar that you may have missed out. And again, we apologize for starting very early as we stated we the information we had for you today was quite long so we had to start early so we can finish up on time so thank you once again so um for those of you who are joining us for the first time you can visit our social media channels we have our twitter that's 
at seal underscore teams. You can also visit our seal academy, that seal academy. If you're looking to get more of these um, trainings, or if you want to follow up on our AWS instructor led trainings as well. So um, once again, thank you very much for joining this webinar. We hope to see you again, same time next week. Have a lovely day.